In this video, I've got clippers from three of the biggest hobby brands in the world. They cost the same, they look the same, and they do the same thing. So how the hell do you decide where to spend your money? Well, by the end of this video, you'll have an answer to that question. A hobby cutter's job is clipping plastic from model sprues. I do this more than most, but not as much as some. And at the start of the year, I made a video where I watched 24 hours of YouTube footage, summarized all the details and put it all together into one video. And in that video, the hobby clipper was the most recommended. So, what makes a good hobby clipper? Its main job is to remove tiny plastic pieces from sprues. For that, it needs to be sharp to avoid damaging the plastic as it cuts and able to get into all the small spaces so you can remove even the smallest pieces easily. It should be ergonomic, so comfortable to hold and easy to use for long periods of time. And finally, it should look nice. And while this last point isn't that important, using nice looking tools just makes me feel better. So that's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna judge all three clippers against those points. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to decide how you wanna spend your money. So as my granddad always said, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's see how these things performed. So these are the Redgrass Games Precision Nippers. And if you zoom in really close on them, you can see they are flat blacked with a single sharp edge, just the way a hobby clipper should be. They ship with a plastic sleeve to keep the blades protected. Crucial having functioning clippers. But pretty much as soon as I pick them up, I notice a glaring problem. The spring for the clippers is really, really light. Light enough to the point where, when you hold them, they almost automatically close, which makes them really weird to use. I tried adjusting them using an Allen key tool that came in another set of clippers, but I couldn't find a way to do it. The little screw on the side just sets the gap between the blades, and you want that basically as tight as you possibly can get it. That said, being able to adjust that is a really nice little feature that you won't usually get in higher-end clippers. As always, if you're enjoying the video, please help me appease the AI overlords by commenting down below. Thanks so much. If you hadn't already guessed it from the music, despite looking fairly similar, the this bay clippers are a step up in almost every way. The leather pouch is lovely, the action is gorgeous, and somehow, despite costing the same, they feel about twice the price. I've been trying to work out a way to show you the difference in the action, but it doesn't really come across on camera. So the best I could come up with was by putting them both on the desk and then holding them to the ground. And then if they open or close, that'll just show how powerful that spring is. Let me show you what I mean. Let's press it to the deck, and you can see the springs are a little bit weaker and the clippers struggle to open. With the this bay clippers though, that's not the case at all. So yeah, not the perfect demonstration, but you'll have to take my word for it. Now lots of people rag on Games Workshop for making poor quality tools or being overpriced, but actually these are a little bit different. Let's deal with the bad bits first. First, the packaging is basic. I get it, that might not be the most important thing in the world, but not even including some sort of blade protector is a massive oversight in my opinion. Not only does that mean the blades aren't protected, but it also means they stay wide open in the drawer, so they take up more space. The handles are also very different to the other two. It's sort of triangular. So although they're not uncomfortable, I'm not entirely sure that I like them. They're also quite slidey, so if you've got sweaty hands, I think they'll be a bit slippy to use after a while. They don't necessarily feel low quality though. The action is really nice and the weight is lovely, if these were the only clippers I could get for £30, I wouldn't be disappointed. One thing that really impressed me with the GW clippers was the fact that the blades are actually quite narrow and pointed, which allows you to get into really tight spaces. However, that's balanced out by the fact that if you just use the ends of the clippers, they don't cut all the way through in one go. Bear in mind they're not adjustable either, so that's a bit of a downside. Once you've got the parts detached from the sprue though, you should be able to go back in with the clippers and then tidy things up a little bit. Again though, because the clippers aren't as sharp or as flat backed as either the This Bay or the Redgrass Games, it's hard to go back in and clean things up at the end. It's not a problem, to be fair, you can just go back in and use a sanding stick or a mold line remover to clean up. 
but it's just easier to do it with the tool that's in hand. Don't get me wrong, none of this is deal breaking stuff. It's just the difference between okay and really good. Now it's the turn of Redgrass games. These feel much more like a set of clippers as I'm used to. The blades are sharp, the back of the blade is flat, and that means you can get right up close to the model to cut it. What I can't get over though is the lack of feedback from that weak spring. Essentially what this means is you have to physically open and shut the clippers while you're using them. And while that doesn't sound that dramatic, it actually makes the whole process quite tedious and annoying. So although the clippers themselves are perfectly functional, I just can't get over that spring. I should also say that while I bought the This Bay Clippers with my own money, Redgrass Games sent me theirs and I borrowed the Games Workshop ones from a friend. And while I don't think that's affected the outcome of the video, I thought you should know. So these are This Bay STA single blade nippers, to be precise. And I'm a sucker for nice packaging. These come in a little magnetic box, which to be fair isn't any use for once you've taken the clippers out of the box, but they also come with this neat little leather pouch, which just is really nice and keeps everything nice and safe inside. They look in form and function very similar to the Redgrass Games ones, but they feel very different, much higher quality. A close-up of the blades show they are actually significantly sharper. Now that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it makes them very sharp for cutting and doing very little damage to the plastics, but it's a bad thing because actually they're quite easy to damage, so you can't use them on anything other than plastic. Use them on resin and they'll be absolutely destroyed. However, they are incredibly accurate and you're able to go back in and tidy up your miniature using just your clippers because that just shaves everything back down again, which is a really nice feature. To wrap it up in a sentence, these clippers are as good a clippers as any I've ever used before. So there it is. Hopefully you've already worked out by now that my recommendation would be the This Bay clippers. But honestly, like all tools, best tools are the one you have at hand at that moment. So if you can only put your hands on the Redgrass Games ones or the Games Workshop ones, they'll do you fine anyway. For the first couple of years, I actually used a pair that cost less than 10 quid. So yeah, you'll be fine. I've been really loving the This Bay tools recently though. I recently made a video about some of the other cool products they make and you can check that one out and it'll be popping up on your screen any second now. As always, a huge thank you to everybody who chats with me over on my Discord server, supports me on Patreon, watches these videos, likes, subscribes, and all the usual stuff. Thanks so much.